Welcome back to Eastside Reviews for another trip into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, last time I dipped into Avengers Infinity War, which I believe is the emotional and kind of action-packed climax or apex of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, how did we follow that up after the traumatic snapping that happened at the end of that movie? Thanos assembled the Infinity Gauntlet, got all six Infinity Stones, snapped his fingers, and erased half of the life in the known universe. Well, we followed it up with a pretty down-to-earth or a pretty, ah, my arms disappeared, oh no. Uh, we followed it up with a pretty down-to-earth, kind of uh, more slice of life -y ish uh, entry with Ant-Man and the Wasp from later that year in 2018. Thinking back on it, I think it would have been more of an emotional and kind of a, uh, a shocking ending if you had Ant-Man and the Wasp come out before Infinity War because of the final uh, teaser scene in Ant-Man and the Wasp. But be that as it may, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, it stars and brings back all the usual suspects from the first Ant-Man. We have Paul Rudd returning as Scott Lang in the second Ant-Man. We have Evangeline Lilly. Lily, she's returning as Hope Van Dyne. The new Wasp, we have Michael Douglas returning as Hank Pym. We have Michael Pena, T.I., and I want to make sure I'm pronouncing the man's name correctly, or at least get it kind of right. It is David Dutch Chino. Uh, they are returning as Louise, Dave, and Kurt, three of Scott's ex-con friends. Um, since the last movie, they've actually started a security business. So good for them, being a student, being economic, and being entrepreneurial. We also have some new characters introduced. We have uh, Bill Foster, Goliath from the comics. He is played by uh, by Lawrence Fishburne. And this was kind of shocking at the time because Lawrence Fishburne had in recent years played the role of Perry White in DCEU, in Man of Steel, and in Batman and Superman. But he made the jump over to Marvel. Um, I'm not sure if he's gonna return in either role. He could be, you know, he could be done with those roles, who knows what uh what Lawrence Fishburne is gonna do. We also have Walton Goggins. He plays Sonny Birch. He's kind of a generic uh evil bad guy thug type dude who's trying to get technology, but he's not the main antagonist. Uh the main antagonist is uh Ava Star, aka Ghost, being played by Hannah Han John uh Kamen. Uh and to really call her a villain isn't accurate because she's kind of a she's kind of a victim in a way. Um, when she was younger, her father worked with Hank Pym and Bill Foster at Shield, but uh, because uh, allegedly her father was a traitor, Hank discredited him and got him removed from Shield, and he continued to do his little experiments on the um, away from Shield, and eventually he ended up it ended up costing him and his wife their lives, and it ended up drastically affecting uh, affecting Ava, and she's now got a, a little quantum phase power. She's got a suit that was built for, her, and Shield basically turned her into an operative. So in a way, she's kind of a victim as well, and she's trying to figure out a way to save off um, dying because she's got maybe weeks, maybe days before she ends up dying because of the quantum look phase, those stuff that she does and the suit that she does. It's a really cool effect that, uh, and it makes for some interesting fight scenes with her, Ant-Man, and Wasp. We also have Michelle Pfeiffer. She stars as Janet Van Dyne, the original Wasp. And thanks to that de-aging effect, she actually, she looks great in the flashback scene that kicked off the movie. And honestly, Michelle Pfeiffer, she's 62. She doesn't look half, doesn't look bad. She still, still is a very beautiful woman, but again, she's a lot more mature. And I like her in this role. This movie is, as a whole, it's okay. Like, it's nothing special to me. It's just kind of, in a way, it's just kind of generic. It's a forgettable entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, the end credit scene of the, of Janet, Hope, and uh, and Hank being snapped away and being sent, you know, because of uh, Thanos being snapped away while Scott is essentially stuck in the quantum realm. That's interesting. That's an interesting choice that they made. Um, and I think it would have been kind of cool if that was the first indication. But I kind of see why in saying it out loud because 
if you know that snaps happening, if you know people are just starting to disappear like that, you can kind of put two and two together and see what's going to happen in Infinity War. So on one hand, I think I would have probably moved this up ahead of Infinity War um, because, you know, it was hard to get kind of hyped for this one in the same way that you got hyped for Infinity War. But on the other hand, I completely understand and the, the with the build. And honestly, uh, with this, and again, this isn't anything necessarily against uh, I'm phasing. I'm, I'm phasing out of reality. I'm like, I'm like, ghost, my arm's gone. Um, this isn't a not really against the movie, um, but it's just, it's well made enough. It has a likable cast enough. And the story is fine enough. Uh, I think Scott Jordan Cassie is cute. Uh, the little stuff that we get with Judy Greer's character and uh, Bobby Cannavale's character, I think those work out fine. Uh, Walton Goggins, again, he's generic villain, henchman, bad guy type. He's he's fine. I think Randall Park is fun in his role as Wu, the, uh, the, FBI, the FBI agent who has to keep tabs on Scott because this is two years after Civil War when he went over to Germany to help Captain America, who's now a fugitive of the law. Um, but because of Infinity War, that's kind of that and the Sokovia Accords, those are kind of, uh, we, we kind of forget about those. But overall, I think this movie, it's a fine entry. There's nothing wrong with it. It's serviceable. It's okay. It's it's fine. Like if you've got a couple hours to kill, you can pop it on, but it's not really going to stick with you in any meaningful way. And that's kind of the case with the first Ant-Man movie. It's a fun heist comedy movie with some good action in it, but it's again, it's just ah, it, it, it's fine. It's kind of more or less, it's kind of forgettable in some ways. But again and stuff and if you've got some time to kill might as well watch it might as well check it off your MCU bucket list so that's going to do it for this review um, I'm powering my way through the final three uh, theatrically released films of the MCU so far uh, we don't have one this year but coming up next is going to be Captain Marvel then we're going to go to Endgame and finally we're going to wrap things up with Spider-Man Far From Home and hopefully uh WandaVision will be out and I can give a little review of that once that series starts being uploaded on Disney Plus. But until then, make sure you're staying safe. Make sure you're treating each other well. Don't be an asshole and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.